In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the budget line of ESCs from T-Motor. We have the T-Motor Velox 45 amp variant, which is the most bang for your buck currently because it does have some features. We're going to do its noise testing and we're also going to take apart the heat sink and take a closer look at it. We'll also be looking at the Pacer 50 amp variant noise testing and also the Pacer 60 amp noise testing as well. Now, what's really interesting with these ESCs, one thing is, well, especially with the 45 amp variant, as you can tell, I've already removed the heat sink to get a closer look at the onboard filtration and the overall design here. Now, as you can tell, the filtration is quite a lot, which is really, really nice. And in the middle right there, what you see is a 10 volt regulator here. So it's really rare that we get four in one ESCs with regulators. Back then we used to have these, which were to have like a 12 volt regulator. However, here we're running with a 10 volt reg, which is gonna be really great, especially if you're running a flight controller that doesn't have a uh, regulator for the DJI stuff or the HD stuff. And not only that, this will also be really good for a normal analog setup. Now, I didn't test the noise on the regulator, but I did test the noise on the ESCs here. So before we get any further here, let's take a look at some of the accessories. They all basically have the same type of accessory. So I'm just gonna grab the 45 amp variant box here. Now the 45 amp is, I think is the most attra attractive one of the bunch because I think it's 45 bucks also. And not only that, it's still a 32 bit ESE basically with a 10 volt regulator, which is pretty insane here. And um, basically they're all the same, except the FETs are different. That's the only difference between them. So if you take a closer look at the wire here, we have a little label that says ESC, and this is the side that goes into your ESC because the flight controller could probably be backwards. So everything is uh, crisscrossed here. So always keep that in mind. Maybe mark it with some permanent marker in case this ever comes off. So you don't one day working on your flight controller or something, and then you accidentally put it backwards and you can say bye-bye to a lot of components. So it's very important to keep an eye out for here. We also do have an XT60 right here with 14 gauge wire, which should do the job just fine. Pretty long as well. Always highly recommended to shorten these out. They also do come with Rubicon capacitors, 35 volt, 470. However, as you can tell, they're not here because I've used them for the noise testing. I've tested with capacitors and also without the capacitors. If we take a close look at the packaging, it's absolutely phenomenal because you could reuse this box for basically to hold screws or any component you need, like small video transmitters or anything of that nature. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the results here. Now, there's quite a lot to unpack here, so bear with me here. So what I've done is I've made groups. You can see 45 amp variant, the 50 amp variant, and the 60 amp variant. This is the, uh, uh, this is the throttle test with a capacitor. This is simulated aggressive flight maneuvers with a capacitor. This is the throttle without a capacitor, and this is simulated aggressive flight maneuvers without a capacitor. They're basically identical, except there are some minor differences, which we're gonna cover in a bit here. And it's kind of giving me a playground to test one of my theories or something that's kind of well known, which is playing with the dead time and to see how it'll improve things. And why do I say that? Well, because all of them share the same exact BLI32 firmware. So that means they all share exactly the same possibly dead time. And the dead time is the time, you know, where the two MOSFETs are off before they turn back on again so you don't short circuit the thing. And each FET and each layout has different dead times and stuff like that. When I created my open hardware ESC, um, I kind of talked about that a little bit there. I'm not going to go too far into it. But anyways, these three share the same exact firmware and they, share, they don't share the same exact MOSFETs or the FETs on board. So, you know, we could kind of see some kind of different, you know, throttle signatures, if you might say. And let's let's take a look at this. So right now, this is the all three of them with a capacitor installed, testing different throttle levels here. And uh, we start off with a 10% throttle. Then we go up to 25, 50, 75, and 100% throttle. So that's what we see here on all of these, exactly identical here. So first of all, let's start with the peak to peak current here. So it just means how much the voltage was fluctuating while the motors were spinning here. And we can see we have a max value of 8.2 volts on the 45 amp variant. So 8.2 volts peak to peak, which is totally acceptable, obviously with a low ESR capacitor. On the 50, it was just eight volts. So there isn't really that much difference now. The main difference, what I found out is that the 50 amp was slightly better. And that is subjective. And, and, and the reason why I say I think it's slightly better, not because it's actually better. I think it's because I, I believe this is a theory of mine. They've designed this one first with the correct dead times. And it, it, there isn't that big of a difference, but you can see how wobbly the throttle is right there. You see that? That's that's kind of like a, a specific, you know, some, some ESCs do that. For example, Daitone F50 kind of does that as well. 
However, you'll see a more aggressive version of this once we remove the capacitor right now. Down here, it seems pretty mellow as well on the 60 amp variant. We don't see any kind of uh, little weird things. This I could not hear. I could just see here on the testing results. So it's not really going to affect anything theoretically. But it seems like maybe the dead time might be wrong. Um, but it's, it's still a pretty good result with the Loisar capacitor. They're basically identical here. I can't really uh, say anything else other than just like by 0.2 volt or, or something different. Let's go to the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers here. So now we're looking at the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers and as a quick glance, they are pretty much identical. We have here, we had 11 peak to peak or 11.6 peak to peak voltage. So it was fluctuating up and down, uh, not really up and down, but from you know the highest end to the bottom end right there, uh, 11 volt, 11.6. Here we had 11.8 and here we had 11.4. So that's all very acceptable. Uh, there's nothing really inherently wrong here. This looks like a really great result. Like this, this is the type of results that's a, basically a good ESC with a capacitor installed. This is the kind of thing you want to look for. There isn't anything weird going on here, so that's really nice. There is really nothing much else to say other than 0.2 volts of differences. Um, well, maybe here around uh, the maximum voltage spike, for example, on the 45 amp was 26.2 volts. Uh, the maximum was 25.2, I think. Let's just double check. Yep, 25. Oh, actually, also the same. Let's see, 26.2. This is 26.6. 26.6 was the maximum voltage spike. For the 60 amp variant, it was 25.8, I believe. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 25, 25.8 volts. So you can see that that's not really that much of a difference, really. Just a couple volts, not even a full volt here. So they're basically identical um, in this aspect also. Now let's go ahead and remove the capacitor so we could really see how they actually perform. Now we're gonna go ahead and start with the throttle. So this is uh, this is the throttle noise. Again, you know, 10, 25, 50, 75% throttle and 100% throttle. And I'm just listening in on the main voltage, seeing what happens here. This is all going into your system, by the way. That's when you don't have a capacitor. You should definitely add a capacitor. And by the way, this is all tested on a 6S voltage. So look at the 60 amp variant. This is what I was talking about, those little squiggly lines that become more apparent when you remove the capacitor. So the capacitor suppresses this little extra stuff, but you know, this is not really normal. You know, it's, it's not normal. It's nothing. Um, it's not bad, but this is not how it should look like. There's clearly something probably wrong with the firmware, which they could probably address really easily. It's not a hardware issue. I think it's more of a firmware issue here because they all basically carry the same design. And I believe the only difference again is going to be the dead time. And this is a really good representation because we have three same, we have the three exact same boards, three exact same firmware, only the FETs are different, which means that some companies get their dead time right, some companies get their dead time wrong, and that could explain quite a lot. And I'm really going to be digging in further into this uh, in the future. I'm already preparing everything for that. Reduce uh, noise, reduce, uh, you know, just to play around with the dead time, see what we come up with. Now, this is not bad. I'm not saying it's bad, but, so, you know, I think I personally, my theory is that maybe the dead time is wrong here and that should be fixed right there. These two look pretty spot on here. However, here we have a little higher voltage spike, but that really won't mean anything. This is just, just you know, some random things that happen sometimes here and there. But this is the area where we really want to concentrate on the 50%, 75% throttle. Now, for the 75% throttle without a capacitor, it is it is not the best um, on, the, on the market in terms of onboard filtration, but it's good. Now, I haven't tested many ESCs on 6S setup. And again, this is probably, I think, the, four, the fourth ESC I've tested on 6S. So we're going to see how well this is going to cope later on. We'll be able to come back and visit it. This is not bad, and um, this is just good. It's just pretty good. This is what we kind of expect here. That's why this is a really great deal. I like the 45 amp variant here, in my opinion. So the 60 amp variant, I recommend T-Motor to go have a look at their dead time for this one. These two seem pretty identical here. Um, so these FETs are probably different than these two quite different maybe so they should uh, probably go back and check that out it's not a big deal breaker or anything but it is something to just take a note of here now let's go ahead and take a look at the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers without a capacitor now what we see here is again they're kind of identical there are some slight differences for example the peak to peak is 16 volts on this uh, let's just put 16 volts peak to peak here was 17.2 volts the maximum peak to peak again 17.2 volts so uh, they're basically almost identical here. The 60 amp is a little bit better, but you can see those waves uh, still carrying through. Uh, here we have them, but a little bit less here. And I really need to do more digging in to figure out what creates this right here. 
I'm very interested in figuring this out because I've seen this quite a lot recently sometimes. Even though it doesn't really affect your flying and some of them have been some of the most reliable ESCs. But I want to know what is this sign? What does this mean? My theory in, in a high probability I believe is a dead time. Uh, but I guess we'll get to see that uh, in the upcoming videos here. Now for voltage spike, let's just go ahead and take a look at this. So this one got 29.2 volts and this one got... Wow, 30.6 volts, even though they have the same onboard filtration. And this one got 29.4 volts. Um, again, they're pretty much identical. There isn't really that much of a difference here. Um, they all look pretty clean for 6S without a capacitor, which again is really, really nice here. And here's just uh, for reference again. Let me show you how they look like with the capacitor. There we go. So you can see the difference there. They're still pretty good. The, the you know for some reason the the 45 amp is, is introducing a slightly higher voltage spike but they're not sustained for very long and it's just when it's switching so um yeah I, I feel like the sweet spot was the 50 amp with their firmware probably but yeah you look at this also here same thing as here here look how much cleaner it is right there you could kind of get get an idea get a feel for it after you see so many ESCs here um now i'm not saying these are bad i'm just just you know, there's nothing else to show you other than the differences here, really. And just to tell you that they're good. I personally rate these uh, 8 out of 10, all of them. Um, this one, I really want to try to figure out what is up here. Again, it's not a big deal. It's nothing. It's just, just me wanting to know why some ESCs do this. Uh, I didn't hear this in the test, so that's a good sign as well. So it's not really affecting. But it is something going on with the voltage here, uh, which is going to be very interesting once we figure that out. And well, that's it guys. Everything's linked down below. I have coupons and everything for you guys down below if you can check them out. Those really support channel. And also come join my Patreon. I do a ton of things there. I give you a lot of things, VIP access to a lot of stuff. Uh, also giveaways and uh, my PCB schematics for the open hardware ESC, open hardware flight control. You go design your own, sell your own, do whatever you want with it. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits and you also help support the channel, keep going. And I could try to dig in. Uh, I really want to do more of this stuff, but it doesn't really get that many views. Uh, but this is really my passion here, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. And I really hope somebody found this useful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.